For those of you who don't know, the millennial generation is as follows. The generation which came of age in the 21st century. We are notorious for spending most of our time exchanging pics of our latest drunken blowout on Snapchat and Instagram. We talk constantly on the phone, even in the bathroom, and text back and forth even during exams. The only books we have ever read completely are the Harry Potter novels, and our definition of a fulfilled lifestyle consists largely of Netflix and chilling. Now, <laughs> is this stereotype 100% accurate? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> to a certain extent, I'm one of them. But many of you in the audience may be wondering, is there a cure for this character malady that's plagued my entire generation? Well, today I'm going to talk about a four-step plan to inoculate the millennial stereotype and replace it with a generation that evokes positive change. And I'm going to do that via these four avenues, which are music, design, education, and mentorship. Now, if executed properly, these media should evoke two key areas of personal development, which are creativity and passion. But before I get into all of that, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and how I got to where I am. I was born into a very loving and supportive uh, Jersey Italian family. I was also born extremely fat and white, as you can see. <laughs> kind of went through this Michelin baby phase. Uh, but as the son of two physicians, I had an everlasting financial and emotional safety net at my fingertips. And this enabled me to pursue and ultimately thrive in my passion, which is music and creativity. Now, because of that, I've won awards, I've played at famous venues, and my productions have gotten the attention of many industry professionals. But I don't want to come across as braggadocious, but rather, I just want to emphasize that I had this infrastructure to succeed through a loving and supportive family. But as all this good stuff was going on in my life, I started to notice this strange phenomenon occurring, especially as I got into high school. I noticed this social hierarchy developing amongst the student body. And what drove me crazy was this hierarchy wasn't based off of originality or ambition, but rather it was how many dingy house party basements you attended and how many times you appeared on your friend's Snapchat story. Students in the audience know exactly what I'm talking about. So while my peers kept busy smuggling vodka into gym class and setting fire to soap dispensers, <laughs> this happened. <laughs> I cracked the books while in school, and I focused on my music and my designs while at home. But as this scrawny, red-headed introvert artist type, I was repeatedly overlooked and that was a very disappointing reality during the best four years of my life. So I thought to myself, how do I combat this? I saw the millennial stereotype manifesting in front of my eyes. I needed to put it to a halt. So I thought about it and thought about it and came up with a solution. And step one to that solution is we got to reinvent public education. So here's a copy of my transcript from my first three years in high school. But I want to focus specifically on my junior year grades. Not on my junior year grades, which are, you know, but on my junior year classes. So at this point in my life, I knew I was destined to pursue a career in the arts. So somebody please enlighten me and tell me why I got to take an honors biology course when I could be focusing on something that's complementary to my creative writing class. No, my biology teacher's a very nice lady. You know, I enjoyed her class, sort of. But I don't care about enzymes. I don't need to care about enzymes. So, but there's a flip side to this coin. If you want to be a cardiologist, then why should you have to rush through the spark notes of King Lear for your literature class when you could be focusing on something like biology that pertains to you? It all comes back to creativity and passion. Does this current system evoke that? No. Rather, it's an oversaturation of well-roundedness. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These are all courses that are offered at my high school, and most of which are offered at all public high schools. 
Now, even though this curriculum is very diverse, it offers a lot to students, it's not curated in any way to instill passion amongst the student body. So on top of this disorganization, we have the creation of strict social boundaries through the honors and non-honor system. So here's a graphic that I made. I like to call this the horizontal alignment. Because when you go into high school, out of hundreds of kids in your graduating class, you can be labeled two ways. You're either an honors kid or you're a non-honors kid. And both of these environments do not motivate students to succeed. If you're an honors student, then number one, your class is weighted anyway. You have that little H on your transcript, which your parents love. And you've already reached that status of being this honors student, so you've got a glass ceiling. There's nowhere higher for you to achieve. And if you're a non-honors kid, then you don't feel worthy, right? Well, I'm, an, I'm not an honors kid. Why should I need to try? Both of these situations do not motivate students, I'm telling you. I've been in AP honors and non-honors classes, and it doesn't inspire kids to succeed. So enough complaining. How do we fix this problem? We have to organize our curriculum vertically so they appeal to specific passions and fields of interest. So I'm proposing a career-based, academy-style redefinition of high school education. And by creating these five distinct academies, we're going to give each student a sense of purpose and identity, which is something that they don't have currently, which manifests stuff like the millennial stereotype. So this sense of purpose, this sense of identity, is going to alleviate those problems. Now, we can't totally eliminate the honors and non-honor system because students learn at different paces. You're going to need that duality to a certain degree. But rather, these non-honors courses are going to serve as a stepping stone for future success than a permanent label. Now, I'll tell you right now, here's what the critics are going to say. They're going to go, oh, Domenico, what if my daughter doesn't uh, know what she wants to do? What if she wants to keep her options open? It's OK. Because you've got to remember, it's just as important to know what you don't like as to what you do like. So if you enroll in one of these academies, let's say biomedical science, and you decide it's not for you, then that's not time wasted. That's actually time well spent. And why not spend that time figuring out what you want to do now in high school than when you're in college and you have less time to spare? It's not time wasted. It's time well spent. And it should happen now while you're in high school. Once again, creativity and passion. Does this system evoke that? You bet. So. Let's talk about mentorship. Most public high schools have an abundance of resources at their fingertips, which they're not taking advantage of. We got local businesses and universities, all of which have individuals who would love to help out high school students, especially if they exhibit a desire in their profession or major in college. And it's mutually beneficial relationship, because high school students are always looking for time spent in a professional environment, especially if it has to do with their desired major in college or occupation. They're always looking for that resume builder. And these universities and businesses, you're telling me they're going to turn down internships, free labor? No. It kills two birds with one stone. And on top of that, not only would every student receive academic assistance outside of school, but not everybody has the positive role models in their life like I have and still do. So this is going to give every student someone to go to for lifestyle decisions, for morals, which will continue to inoculate this negative stereotype amongst my generation. So here's what I've done to input these ideas thus far. My cousin Anthony Longo, a Rutgers medical student, and I uh, we harvested these ideas for education and mentorship and started a nonprofit called Real World Academy. And this nonprofit aims to input these academy style learning systems, coupled with the notion of mentorship, in all public high schools. We want to go global with this. But we're starting locally. Uh, we have, we're looking at a school in Passaic County in New Jersey. We've had similar programs succeed in Newark. And I'm telling you right now, my principal and my superintendent are in the audience right now. I'm pitching this to you. Let's make this happen. <laughs> These are good ideas. 
And what's most important is, this is from a student's perspective, which a lot of people forget is the most important perspective. So that's step one and two. Oh, a little side note, why, why do we call it Real World Academy? Because uh, what do teachers always say? Oh, when you get into the real world, you're uh, not gonna have. <laughs> so isn't the whole purpose isn't the whole purpose of school is to prepare you for the real world? So that's what we're doing with Real World Academy. So uh, that's uh, step one and two. Step three, this is where I come in because I want to be a rock star. We've got to attack the culture. Now, artists like Kendrick Lamar and the Beatles did it for me. They showed me that you can be an original, you can follow your passion despite what the status quo says, and make a lasting impact on future generations. I want to be that artist. I want to be that voice for my generation and for future generations. So I founded Il Dottore Productions. And this creative company is going to serve as the cultural force of change for the youth. If I could make a positive impact on pop music and fashion with my creations, then ultimately, we're looking at cultural reform. Because what's the one thing that influences students more than education, more than personal mentors? It's pop culture. So if together we can initiate this movement that tackles those three areas, and I want to emphasize, I'm not selling you a product, I'm selling you a movement. So if we can initiate this movement together, then ultimately we're looking at one thing, and that's a new renaissance. Together, we are going to destroy the millennial stereotype and replace it with a new renaissance. But I can't do it alone. I need the educators, the people in power, but most of all, the kids to get behind this. You know, look, I've been given a lot, but look at what I've done with what's been gifted to me. Why can't everyone have that same platform for success in a fulfilled lifestyle? We got to make it happen. I mentioned it before, one of my idols, Kendrick Lamar, pointed out in one of his songs, everybody lacks confidence. But the reason why everybody lacks confidence is because the current system doesn't encourage kids to be unique. It has to stop. I'm telling you, I saw it all throughout high school. I see it every day in these halls. Students fall into the trap of allowing negative peer pressure to fuel their decisions, which inhibits them to achieve their maximum potential as people. So I encourage everyone, especially the kids, to join this revolution and start a new renaissance. Thank you. <laughs>